Hello there. All right, so in today's video, we'll be making a simple Hello World example in WebAssembly text format, which surprisingly no one has done in YouTube. So yeah, let's have fun. Okay, so to start off, let's create our web file, our JS file, and our HTML file. I'll speed up this process so you don't have to see all the boring stuff and I'll explain later. Okay, so I just created a simple HTML file. Um, it doesn't have much in it. We're just grabbing the script and then we'll use JavaScript to actually display our hello world in HTML. Um, here in JavaScript, we're just uh, fetching our uh, WASM file, which will generate from the WAD file. Um, the response from the fetch, uh, we input it into an array buffer. So we have an array of bytes and now these bytes, we instantiate them as a WebAssembly module. So out of here, this promise will result in a module and an instantiation. So an instantiation is a module with a state and a module is stateless. Great, so now we have our result and in here I'm just grabbing exports because I don't wanna write result.instance.exports every single time. Great, so let's go into what now? In here, I want to, okay, so we'll have, let's create our memory. I wanna create it in JavaScript, and we're creating memory because um, we'll create a string, and we can't really store a string anywhere else but memory. We can just create an i32 const as we normally would with integers. So I'll create an import object, because I wanna create it in JavaScript, I'll call it mem and I'll say new webassembly dot memory and we'll set an initial value of one. So this initial value, what it's doing is it's setting uh, the page size and in webassembly pages are 64 kilobytes. So in here we have a memory of 64 kilobytes. Great. Um, yeah, so now what we will be able to do is we can import from JS uh, mem and we can put this inside of memory one. Okay, so now we have access to memory and let's actually pass in this import object in our instantiation. Okay, now what we should be able to do is create a data um, type and we'll put it in, uh, we'll, we won't offset it, we'll just put it in the first available index of memory, so zero and we'll say hello world. Perfect. Now, if I were to get our memory and display it, we would have something like, um, I think capital H in UTF-8 is 72, and then, I don't know, just a bunch of integers, I guess, I think 13 integers, which is the length of this string, uh, encoded in UTF-8. So we can't really display that. We want to actually display hello world. So we have to decode it. So what I want to do is I want to create another property here and I'll call it decode. And this decode is going to be a function. So this function, I'm going to pass in the start value and the end value. And these values are the indices from when I want to start decoding to when I want to end decoding. So in our example, this is a string of length 13, and we're putting it at zero, so it will be zero and 13, okay? Okay, now um, let's create, okay, so if I do, I'm gonna say typed array, and I'll explain what I mean by this in a second. So we'll create a uint h, and we're gonna pass in import object.js.mem.buffer. Okay, so what I'm doing here is the following. Our mem object, it has a buffer property, 
um, but this buffer property is not even iterable. So we can't iterate it and get um, all the all the integers that I told you. So what we have to do is we have to sort of convert it to an array and we'll convert to a typed array um, of unsigned integers with 8 bits. And then we're just passing into start and end because as I mentioned our memory has 64 kilobytes so it has a lot of indices and we don't want all that we just want uh, from 0 to 30. Okay so in here we're converting it to an array. Now uh, we're almost done. What we want to do is well, actually, we have let's import this. Let's import our decode method into WebAssembly text format. So we'll say JS decode, and we'll put it into a function also called decode, which receives um, two parameters, i32 and i32. This is shorthand. Uh, you could write, you could close parameters and write param i32 again, but you can if the uh, you can just say this for shorthand notation. Um, yeah, and now let's actually create our hello world function. Uh, we'll export this function. We'll call it um, hello world. And in here we're going to get in const 0, enter to const 13. And we're just going to pass these onto a call to decode. Fantastic. Now that we have this, um, well, eventually here we'll call our function. So from our exports, we'll say um, hello world. And in here, we'll want to actually print it. So actually, I'll call I'll call this the code print. So we can actually print it. Um, decode print. Decode print, decode print. So here I'll say document dot write, and so I'm going to make use of the text decoder API that JavaScript has, so we can actually convert the UTF-8, which is the character encoding type, um, into visible text. So we'll say text decoder. Uh, in here we'll specify that it's a UTF-8 type, not nine. UTF-8 we'll call the method decode and we'll pass into R so you see that it receives a buffer source and our buffer source is going to be the typed array okay um, and that should be about it um, let's try um, let me make this bigger so let's try um, compiling it. We didn't get any errors, and now we have our WASM file generated. That's looking good. And now let's call, let's start a Python server. Let's run it, and oh, I think we got an error. Let's see what happened. Oh, okay. I forgot to say new. In here, Let's just say, oh, I did say new. Oh, I think I forgot for this one. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah, OK. Yay, we got hello world. So yeah, just a quick and dirty hello world example. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to get back to you all. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.